Hi there and welcome to another PST Tuts spoon fed Photoshop tutorial. I'm Gavin Steele and today I'm going to be taking you through how to create a photo manipulation of a flooded city scene. And you can check out the final image here, it looks pretty cool. We've got um, these London streets being flooded by uh, what looks like huge tidal waves coming down, big huge tsunami and hitting the cars, splashing off. And then we've got a really cool rain effect and a final colour effect on top of it. And once again, read through the tutorial, check out all of the links. And let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is load up Photoshop and our first image, which is going to be that picture of the streets. Now, I'm going to bring this onto my canvas so we can get a better idea. And this is the image that we're going to be using. Now, we don't want these people here because they'd be drowned and we don't want to spend too much time worrying about them. So we're going to go in and we're just going to clone those out. That's going to be the first thing that we're going to do. So I'm going to zoom in quite close to that area because it's a large, large picture. There's quite a lot we can do with it. So we'll just quickly grab a clone tool and we're going to swap between soft and hard brushes. So with the soft brush selected, hold down Alt and let's just get rid of these areas roughly to start with. Okay. Just selecting different points as we come along. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the hardness of my, uh, decrease the hardness of my brush. Just smooth some of that out. Okay, I'm going to grab this area here. Again, zoom in if you you know you want it to be perfect, but when you zoom out, all of this will take effect and it'll look pretty good. So, so just cloning out these people. Clone them back in. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in one more. Okay, we're going to look at this top area here. We're going to set our brush tool, the hardness, back up to 100%. And then I'm going to grab this area here. This line. Okay, and again, I'm going to grab this line. So you get through, it looks pretty good like that. Let's zoom out to have a look. So there we are at 100%, and you, know, you can see there's still a few little fragments left there, but actually, in the grand scheme of the whole image, it's not going to look too bad at all. Let's zoom back in, we can sort this area out. Okay. 
Okay, let's have a look at her now. Decrease the size of my brush. I'm going to do this little pillar here. So I'm going to select this top bit and just keep coming down. Okay, so just some simple um, cloning out. Okay, let's zoom out and have a look. And that area looks pretty good. It definitely doesn't stand out as if we've definitely cut something out of there. Um, the image is of good enough quality that when we zoom back out, you know, it doesn't really stand out. So that's just cloning out that first part. Um, it does take some time. Next step is we're going to cut out this sky area at the top. And you can either use, in the tutorial it tells you to use the polygon lasso tool. I prefer to use the pen tool. It gives you, with the polygon tool, I find that when I make mistakes, which I inevitably do, it always annoys me that I can't just go back and undo the last little uh, point made. So I'm going to use the pen tool to do that. And I'm just going to cut out this top area. So using the pen tool, we're going to jump to the uh, zoom tool and just zoom in. And we just want to roughly cut out our sky area. So P on the keyboard for pen. And just roughly. You can take your time to go around all those little chimney bits. Um, I'm just going to roughly go around each edge. Using space bar to move around when you've got that uh, tool selected. Okay, we're going to end up covering up this area anyway with the water, but um, just for now, try and keep it as you know original as possible. Just in case you want to keep this little church in the background, you don't want, you want the water to maybe be a little bit lower down um, in the street. But I think we're going to end up covering this up anyway. But so I'll just quickly race through that. And then over the other side. Just going to zoom out and then close this off over the top. Right click, make it a selection, no feathering, click on OK, double click on the background, let's call it backdrop, and hit delete, and there we've cut out our sky. Okay, that looks pretty good. Next thing that we need to do is actually bring in that sky, so head over to um, 
the link on the website. So there's our street image, and we're going to be getting these from CG Textures. Uh, some amazing, amazing free textures on here. I do um, urge you to to seek these out and try them out. I've already downloaded them, so let's bring it into the document. Um, I happen to have two. I had a look at two just to try out two different things just to show you what you can be done. So I'm going to bring in the first one, V on the keyboard. I'm just going to drag that straight into our document, and then I'm going to minimize that out of the way. Um, I'm going to increase the size of it. And get it nice and big. Stick it where it needs to be. Move it below our backdrop, and then we can start to see how it's going to look. Now, we want a fairly moody cloud. And if we just bring that in like so, you might want to hit Command T, zoom out. Hold command, grab these corners and bring them in just to play around with the perspective a little bit. Give myself a bit more room here. And bring that one in as well. Hit OK. And zoom in, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to grab my other sky as well. I'm going to bring that one in. Again, hit Command T. Scale that. Again, we're just looking for different moods in the sky. Having a look at all these little areas. Oops. Because I've got my auto layer selected, that moved that. And we just want this layer selected. So I quite like that little bit there. Command T. And again, just going to move my canvas out. I'm going to grab these edges and just play around with the perspective a little bit. Okay, and then it's about just choosing which sky you like. Now I quite like this dark color. So I'm going to turn that one off. And I'm going to keep this sky. Okay, next thing to do is we're going to bring in our wave. We're going to come back at the end. We're going to touch up all the sides of these buildings, a bit of the sky. And um, we're going to tie it together really well. It's a great tutorial. So next thing we need to do is add our first wave. And I think it's taken from a, uh, a film. I'm not sure. It looks like a film, doesn't it? So I guess that's where it's from. And we can just literally V on the keyboard, drag that straight into the middle, move it above our backdrop, position it somewhere close to where we want it. And then E on the keyboard for the eraser, nice soft brush, and just start to take away roughly these edges. And then zoom in. Okay, E again. And we're just going to get rid of it. Decrease the size of your brush.
fragments left. So what I'm going to do is just create a new layer at the very bottom. And I'm going to fill that with black. Turn that off and turn that off. I can just see these little areas here that I've missed. Oops. So just make sure you get those. Okay, let's turn everything back on. That looks pretty good. We just need to move it into a uh, position. And I think that looks pretty good. I might just increase the size of this just a touch. Okay, and hit enter. And that looks pretty good. We need to make a couple of adjustments to this. We're going to do a um, image adjustment, and we're going to come down to brightness and contrast. We're going to set that to 15 and 20. And then we're going to come to image adjustments, and we're going to go to hue and saturation. And in the hue and saturation, let's bring that up. We're going to set that to minus 2, 16, oops, 16, and minus 13. Okay, so that's tying all that in together. And really all we've got to do is add the water coming from here. Uh, we'll add something to the side of these buildings and then touch them up and bring in our rain. So the next bit is... Uh, what I found to be the hardest bit, and uh, we've got to get all our water images, and we're going to bring them in and start to build up the water coming towards us. So I'm going to grab those images now. And just drop them in. Okay. And we need to have a good look at the image and see which bits uh, we want to use. So what I'm going to do is just shrink them down. I'm going to move them over to the right of my screen. Okay, so I'm going to start with this image, which is waterwaves 0003 underscore 3 underscore S. And we're going to use this bit here to start with. So V on the keyboard, I'm going to drag this into my document, and all I'm looking at is the shape of this. So I'm going to grab my eraser tool, and I'm going to get rid of all of this. Okay. And then I want this to be from here, going back towards there. So we just need to play around with the perspective a little bit, because I want it to be up to about the side of this car. So Command T, hold down Command, pull some of these out. Then I'll just flatten it a little bit. Bring these down a bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to grab the eraser tool. Come in. And get rid of that like so, and that looks pretty good. Don't worry about the size, we're going to play around with that. In fact, I might just shrink this down. Just a touch. Here. I'm going to add another bit here. So I think the perspective still needs just a little bit tweaking. Okay, I'm going to grab that image, bring it in one more time. Gonna, uh, Flip it, again, grab the eraser tool, 
And let's get rid of all this area up here. Just joining these two together. That looks pretty good. So it's coming from around here and then towards us. Now, it looks a little bit low, all of that. So I'm going to grab those, merge those together. Just bring those up. Okay, my razor tool, I'm gonna to get rid of these edges. Okay, now I'm gonna grab uh, this image, 003-1S, uh, and bring that in. Got a bit of turbulent water, in fact, I'm not going to bring that one in. I'm going to get a bit of the, the still water from this image here. And all I'm doing is just slowly and surely looking at the flow of the water. I'm going to put that bit there. Grab the eraser tool. Make sure you've always got a soft edge so these blend, blend in really nicely. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that earlier one. I'm going to alt-click to copy it. <coughs> Excuse me, flip it horizontally. I'm going to move it above the other layer. So we're going to get this like funneling effect around the sides, hit enter, grab the eraser tool, just so it doesn't look exactly flipped. Bring that around. Okay, it's starting to look pretty good. Okay, next thing to do is to fill in this area here and some of the sides. So I'm going to go away and do that with exactly the same technique. And when I come back, hopefully I'll have something that looks pretty good. Okay, and this is what I've got. Um, it doesn't look perfect, but I think it looks pretty good. Uh, we've got this big rush of water coming down towards us and then dropping off and big rush coming down the middle for the two sides, some little uh, flicks of water going off covering the cars and running up around them. You're going to need to use a little bit of perspective around the bottom, so hit Command T hit command and pull out to the bottom right and bottom left to bring those bottom edges up towards the screen and it's just going to give a little bit of depth there. And if I just turn these off one by one you can just see how they're added. Just small little bits. That bit in the middle. In fact that bit in the middle if I just hit command T on it. Oops. Again, you might want to just play around with the perspective a little bit. Just bring that out. Just a touch. Grab the big soft eraser tool. And just cut into that a little bit more. That looks pretty good. So 
see, so lots of little bits up here just to build up this, the waterfall coming down. And then just see all these bits just add up. And also see by doing this any of the little artifacts Quite a few layers of that. Oops. And then finally we're left with our water. Okay, so that's everything um, back on up. Oh. A couple of little gaps there. I think it looks pretty good. It's not perfect by any means, but you know, take your time and you'll get the effect you want. You're just literally adding and then using the soft eraser tool just to help blend those bits in. And every now and again, hit Command T, play around with perspective when the, the water gets closer um, to the front of your, the, the bottom of your canvas. And obviously, it kind of folds away towards the back. Next thing we need to do is grab all of those. I'm going to put them into a group, Command G, I'm going to duplicate that group, and then Command D, I'm going to merge that group together, just so I've always got a copy of all of those layers. Now, with this group here, we're going to come up to Image, we're going to go to Adjustments, and we're going to play around with our color balance. So start with minus 19, for your uh, midtones, 0 and then 12, and then come to highlights and let's set that to. Let's move this out of the way a second. Let's set our highlight um, highlights to minus 40. Oh, no, just bear with me a second. Uh, midtones, sorry, should have been. 19, 12, okay, yeah, I can see what I've done there, I've just, I put my shadow uh, numbers in for my midtones, sorry about that, so 0, 0, click on shadows, and the first number should be minus 19, 0, 12, and then midtones are going to be 40, Sorry, minus 40, 0, and 28. And then our highlights, and they're going to be minus 21, 0, and 19. And click on OK. Now, don't worry for now, it looks too blue, it doesn't quite tie in with um, our color in the background. There's a number of things that we're going to be able to do to bring that all together, but once we desaturate a little bit later, it's, it is all going to work out. So next thing we need to do is we're going to add some splashes to the sides here. So we need to load up those splashes images. So I'm done with my water. I'm just going to close those down. Okay. And then I'm going to bring in my two whale splashes and we're going to use these by the car so I'm going to grab my big whale one first bring that in bring it to the top of the stack think about where about that's going to go I'm going to use this bit here so I'm going to zoom right out grab the eraser tool Nice and big. Okay, and then let's zoom back in. Try 
transform that right down. And again, just start to erase out these hard edges. Okay, let's zoom in. And then start to position that. Now I want it to be just about hitting the car there. Okay. Not over the moon about this top area, but Command T. Actually, let's make a selection just a bit we want. Command Shift I to invert that, delete the rest, and then let's position that again. Again, I only want this area here. Right click, warp, and let's just bring that over a bit. Okay, grab the eraser tool. Over like so, we're going to bring another little bit on top of that. So let's grab this in one more time. This time, I just want to keep this area here. So I'm going to grab the selection tool. Make sure you got a lasso and just go around a little bit. So, Command Shift I, delete the rest, Command D select. And we're going to scale that down. waste And there we go. Just adds a little bit more um, of the detail to that bit there. Um, okay, on the right hand side, we're going to use our other image, this one here. Just going to bring that straight in. Again, position it around our bonnet of our car. And then we'll just get rid of this water area.
Okay, that looks pretty good where it is, but I'm just going to warp it just a little bit. Bring that in line. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Even this little bit of wave looks pretty good. Sometimes you get lucky like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's just zoom out and have a look. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to add a little bit of foam around the edges of, um, of our cars. Again, you can just use these images. Just gonna scale it. Bring that round. V alt and just drag it down. Looks pretty good. And let's drag it on one more time. And we'll work on this this side. T, flip it horizontally, rotate, get just about the line of the car right, and then Again, move that round. And that looks pretty good. Might want to put another one just over here in the background. A really small one. And again, just take your time. I'm just rushing this now because of the tutorial, but you can start to get some really nice effects. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's zoom out. <coughs> okay, they're a little bit too white. We're going to play around with the colors in a minute because not all the colors match, and we're going to play around with um, this wall and our sky. Okay, so that's pretty much it for, for adding bits of water, and we're going to move on and do those other bits now. So we can group all of that. Okay, I'm going to turn all the water off. 
And we're going to start playing around with our sky and our backdrop. So let's zoom in. And what we're going to be doing is grabbing our burn tool. And we're just going to be darkening the top of these buildings. Like so. And then our sky. Just darkening around the edges. Like so, that looks pretty good. Okay, make sure you had your exposure in set to 50 and it was on highlights. Now we're going to add our side building. Okay, bring that straight in. I'm going to close down my water. V on the keyboard, drag it straight in. It needs to be above our backdrop. And just going to scale it, I think, just a little bit. Command T. And we want that to start yeah, about there. Soft eraser brush. should blend in pretty nicely. Don't worry too much about the cars because when we turn our water back on <coughs> It's going to cover up most of it anyway, but it's just nice to bring all of that in. So I'm still just going to erase some of this top area up here. But I think all in all, it ties it in pretty well. And it just adds something slightly different to look at on the other side of the street. It looks really, really mirrored, but when you add that, it just, break, it just breaks that little bit up. And we're just going to play around with um, the top of our water now. We're going to go to image adjustments. We're going to go to color balance. And we're just going to play around with um, our colors. Just trying to get it to match the intensity just a little bit more. So it just ties in a little bit better, like so. That looks pretty good. Click on OK. I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to turn off the original. I'm going to stick that into my water layer and duplicate that one more time. Turn the original off. Command E, merge that layer. Come up to Image, Image Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. And we're going to try and make it look a little bit more like water. So I'm going to desaturate it quite a bit. And that looks a lot better already. And I'm just going to darken it just a touch. Let's have a look. That looks pretty good. OK, and then click on OK. So now we've tied all our water in together. It looks like it's coming from the same source, the same type of water. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to tidy up some of these edges on our water. So grab the eraser tool, just 
bring some of those in a little bit. Just tidying the edges. Like so. Okay, so it's starting to come together. But it is missing our rain. Now there's a number of different ways of doing rain. There are loads and loads of tutorials uh, online. Uh, so we're just going to do a really, really quick way. So first we need to do is create a new layer. We need to fill that layer with black. Then we're going to go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And then we're going to set that to 65, Gaussian and Monochromatic. That looks pretty good. Click on OK. And then we're going to go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. And set that to 90 degrees. And let me just double check my settings. Distance of 28, that's right. And then click on OK. And then go back to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And we're going to set that to be 61. 1.46 and 241. That looks pretty good. It's given us some good black areas in between the rain. Click on OK. And then we're going to set the layer to screen. And there you can see it's got rid of those black areas and we've got quite a heavy downpour of rain. And we can use a soft eraser uh, to erase the top of the layer and then we can add, we can transform the rain and then it just will cover the whole screen. But for now, that looks pretty good. Um, let's zoom out just a bit. Let's grab that eraser tool and see these little white bits at the top. Just going to get rid of those. Same at the bottom. And then Command T. Enter. And that just gets rid of, hopefully, we need to do that a little bit more for the top. And what that's done is, it's got rid of the grouping at the top, where it's just like you can see there's lots of little white lines, and that's starting to look pretty cool indeed. Now, we also need to add a little bit of depth between the rain and the background. So we're going to add um, a little bit of fog. So to do that, all that we need to do is, we're going to grab, with the eyedropper, a little bit of blue. I don't know what kind of blue all going to be fairly similar. But I actually want blue from the water and just brighten it up just a little bit. And then click on OK. And then we're going to create a new layer. And we're going to move that layer underneath all, all of our water. So we're going to move it down here. We're going to come to our gradient fill. Make sure you've got the second option selected. <coughs> uh, radial uh, gradient and then what we're going to do is we're going to fill that layer we're going to duplicate it set the opacity um, at about 30% and then set it to multiply so let's really bring that out bring, oops I'm going to bring that down Let's turn off auto select. Okay, so that's going to go there. Duplicate the layer. We're going to set that on top of our water layer. Oops, not in it. Okay, and then we're going to reduce the opacity of that down to 30. And we're going to set it to multiply. Okay. 
And that's it, that's our little uh, background area, a bit of mist coming over uh, the top, getting rid of that black area. And that looks pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do is we're going to add our car. So you should have something that looks like this after you've cut it out. V, and I'm just going to drag that into our image. Scale it right down. And move that above our water layer, like so. And we're going to keep scaling that. Put that just about there. And then I'm going to bring it below the water layer. I'm going to mask out on our water layer with a black brush. Actually, let's bring that back up but still be on the mask. Just so I've got an idea. Now I'm working on the mask layer. Sure, we've got a black brush selected. And let's zoom in. Get a better idea. Okay, and then zoom out, and we're going to grab some of our splashes, and we're going to bring them back in. So you want the splash of the big whale, and we're going to stick that in there, Command T, link those, and reduce that right down, it's going to go about there. Grab the eraser tool, zoom in. Okay, I'm going to grab the lasso tool, create oops, sorry, a layer out of that area there, grab the eraser tool on this layer, okay, get rid of this. And then move this into position. Turn this layer back on.
bring that down. And again, this is all personal preference. But let's have a look and zoom out. Looks pretty good. Grab those two, merge them together. Image, image adjustments, hue and saturation. Just desaturate those. A little bit. Click on OK. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to desaturate the car as well. So image adjustments, human saturation, and let's just drop that a little bit. Just darken it. OK, that looks pretty good. And click on OK. Yeah, and we're almost there. The next thing we need to do is we're going to create a gradient map and we're going to uh, add a little pastel gradient map. So down at the bottom, we're going to come down here, we're going to click on gradient map. And in the drop down, we're going to select pastels. And then hopefully you should be able to see we have these new pastel colors down at the bottom. And we're going for this one here, this yellow fade to blue. So I can close that. <coughs> click on reverse, click on OK. And then we're going to set that to multiply and leave it on 100%. And it's just going to tie in all those whites, all those shiny areas. They're going to look really good. There's a couple, uh, well, one last thing that Andrew Garden has done on this tutorial is he's, at the top, he's gone to Image, Apply Image. Um, yep, click on OK. Oops, no, we don't want to do that in, in there. So if we just do a new layer, image, apply the image, click on OK. We're then going to go to Filter, Sharpen, and Sharpen. And I'm just going to add a little bit more detail to some of these edges. And um, we could go a step further. You could go to Image, uh, Filter, Other, High Pass. Bring that down just a bit, click on OK, set that to, to overlay, and again that's going to bring out the edges of this water. But the final, you know, those finishing touches are up to you. But brilliant, brilliant tutorial by Andrew there. Let me just close everything down so we can get a really good look at our final image. It, or even the side bits all worked really well. And the water looks like it's a huge wave coming towards us. And it's a great tutorial. So do check out the original, some great tips along the way reasons for why he's done certain things. Thanks very much, Andrew. I've been Gavin Steele, taking you through this PSD Toots how to create a photo manipulation of a flooded city scene. Thanks very much, and I hope you enjoyed it.